Hey, how you doing there? Homestead Ed here. So, I don't know if you watched any of my older videos about when I got my, uh, my amateur radio license, but I got my amateur radio license basically so I'd have a reliable way in case cell phone towers are down and regular means of communications are down, that I could get in touch with the house here on Long Island to the homestead in Pennsylvania. And what I found out with the technician's license, that's a little tough. But I've been learning a little bit more about it, and people have told me that it's possible to do uh, if I put out on two meters, if I put out 100 watts of power, and I have a 10 element Yagi antenna. So I looked at them, and you can buy them, they're not that expensive. But um, there's the ham radio in the background though. Not that expensive, but I decided as part of this learning process, it'd be better if I could build them. They have YouTube videos on how to build them. So I decided I'm going to try to build my own, and I'm going to make a YouTube video about how to do it. I have an old TV antenna up in the attic that I intend to take apart. I've got some cable here from an antenna, like a roof mount antenna from me in the Ocala. I'm going to take it all apart and show you how it goes. So stick around and let's see what happens. So here I am up in the attic and there's that old television antenna I was talking about. So I'm going to get this out of the attic, I'm going to take it apart, and I'm going to turn that into a, a ham radio antenna. Well hopefully, we'll see how it goes, but I think that I've got all the material I need right up here. So I couldn't be happier with my find up there in the attic. You know, when I started talking about this build this morning, my wife, uh, I said to my wife, we have an old antenna up in the attic. Maybe I could take that down, an old TV antenna, take that down and turn it into something. I'm so very, very happy. Now here at the back, that's the AM station, so I won't really be using that. But other than that, all I have to do is cut these elements down to size, space them the correct way, and uh, I should have a beautiful four element Yagi within a couple hours. Stick around, I'll show you how it goes. Okay, well here are the parts for um, my two meter Yagi. It's going to be a five element two meter Yagi, and I got all the parts from that old TV antenna. This should work out great. Over there, uh, my four elements, my my uh, reflector, my three directors, and very important, I saved that piece for attaching the driven, driven element. I'll just simply attach my cable right there to that, and I'll have two sections coming out on my driven element. I've got the boom there, and even the original mast that I can hook this antenna up to. So let me get to cutting things down to size and uh, attaching things. I'll show you in a little bit how it's going. I want to show you what I'm doing and give you some measurements here. Um, so the, these are my elements. This is what we call a reflector. That's at the back of the Yagi. This is your driven element. This is where my wires are going to attach to. Um, and then you have three directors in the front. So let me give you measurements on this. The boom, this piece is 65 and a half inches long. Um, the, lo the longest of the elements is the reflector back here, and that's 39 and a half inches. My driven element is 18 and a half inches on either side of this isolation unit. And then my three directors are uh, 35 and 3 quarters in the front, 35 and a half, and 35 and 3 quarters. And I spaced these 16 inches apart. This really worked out perfectly with this material. I had very little cutting to do or anything like that. And I could do it all just with a pair of snips. So you can see I mounted these units already, these elements already. And I simply took it, measured the, the element to size, snipped it off. Then just to kind of 
neaten it up a bit, I snipped off a little on either side. And crimped it down with a pair of lineman pliers. Now to attach my elements, originally I was thinking about uh, drilling holes through them and using uh, nuts with bolts on them. But I found that it's real simple. If I just write in the center, I also mark my center point. Just give it a crimp to flatten it out a bit. And I uh, can't seem to find my screws. I used just a Duradyne. Here we go. Just a Duradyne, self tapping Duradyne bit. Put it on my mark and drill it right in there. And that's basically it. All I have to do now is attach my wire, do a little bit of soldering, you know, tighten these things up, and we have a two meter Yagi. So let me get to that. I'll come back in a few minutes. We'll hook it up to the radio and see if this thing works. So I got it all put together here and I hooked it up to my radio. Um, I checked it out. I just have a cheap little SWR meter here. I don't have an antenna analyzer. So I'm going to have to take this to a friend who has one and get it really checked out. But I hooked it up. It looks like I'm at about 1.5 on it. Um, but let's see if it works. I'm going to try hitting a, a repeater. It's about nine miles from here. And when I click, you're not really supposed to just click on here, but I'm going to do it anyhow. When I click on this, if we hear that little beep back, that means I hit the repeater. So let's see what happens. Okay, so you heard that beep. Um, that means I'm hitting that repeater. Let's just see real quickly. If somebody will give me a radio check and uh, tell me how I'm doing here. KD2 KNL. Um, can I get a radio check, please? Okay, thank you for that. I'm just building a little two meter Yagi and uh, I wanted to try that. Thanks a lot. KD2 KNL, I'm clear.